Welcome to this video on graphing quadratics in intercept form. By the end of this video, you should be able to graph a quadratic equation in its intercept form, identify the important characteristics. Okay, so we've talked about graphing in standard form. We've talked about graphing in vertex form. This is intercept form. Intercept form is really when you factored the problem and then you can graph the intercepts. The values P and Q here are the x-intercepts. And remember when we were doing our zero product property, when we were solving to find the x-intercepts, you would take each of those factors and set them equal to zero and solve them to find out what the actual x-intercepts are. And then, um, so when we have our x-intercepts, our axis of symmetry will be halfway between those two values. So we're going to be using Desmos. Make sure you have it available on your phone or computer, and we're going to go ahead and try this. So we're going to take this equation, 2 times x plus 6 times x plus 4, and we're going to put this into Desmos and look at this. But before we do, I already know what the x-intercepts are going to be, because I'm going to use the zero product property, and I'm going to solve each of these. So for this to be equal to zero, my x value would have to equal negative 6, and really what I did is I subtracted 6 from both sides. If I subtract 4 from both sides to isolate that x, I get x equals negative 4. I now know where the graph is crossing the x-axis, and I can ask myself, well, what's halfway between negative 4 and negative 6? And that will at least tell me um, what my axis of symmetry is, because we want to find the x-intercepts right here. So this is really negative 6, 0 negative 4, 0. There's my two x-intercepts. And then the line of symmetry or the axis of symmetry falls halfway between them because the vertex will ha fall halfway between them. So let's take a look at our graph so we can kind of visualize this. This is what we're saying. There's our x-intercept at negative 6, 0. There's our intercept at negative 4, 0. So halfway between them, that's your axis of symmetry because that's where your vertex is. And remember, your axis of symmetry is the same as the x value of your vertex. Halfway between negative 4 and negative 6 is negative 5. So our axis of symmetry is at negative 5. Okay, let's try it again. Let's get our x-intercepts. So there's no variable at this number out front, so we don't have to worry about it. We only have to worry about solving if there's a variable involved. So we have two parentheses. One is x minus 2 equals 0. The other is x plus 2 equals 0. If I solve this equation, I get x equals 2, so my x-intercept is at 2, 0. If I solve this equation, I get x equals negative 2, so my other x-intercept is at negative 2, 0. Now what is halfway between 2 and negative 2? See if you can kind of visualize this in your brain, and we're going to take a look at this on Desmos. All right, so once we've put our equation into Desmos, you can see there's our x-intercepts at negative 2, positive 2, Halfway between them is where our vertex is and our axis of symmetry, and our axis of symmetry in this case will be where x equals 0, because we got to name the x value of the vertex. So our axis of symmetry will be x equals 0. So when we look at number 3, it has not been factored. We're still going to use Desmos for this. So let's go put this equation into Desmos and see if we can identify the x-intercepts here. So here's our graph, x squared plus 2x minus 15. It's graphed it for me. So I have an x-intercept at negative 5, 0, and 3, 0. So I know my intercepts. They are at negative 5, 0, and 3, 0. Now we could actually work backwards and put this 5 and 3 back in, because remember when we solved do you see how the sign changed every single time we solved? So once when it's solved, this x-intercept's at negative 5. In its factored form, it'd be plus 5. This 3 is a positive 3, so in its factored form, it would be negative 3. This would be the factored form of this equation. Okay, halfway between negative 5 and 3. Well, let's look. Where's our vertex. Scroll out some so we can see it. Here's my vertex 
at negative 1 16. So my axis of symmetry is at negative 1. So I'm going to say x equals negative 1. All right, we'll do it one more time for this last one. Pause the video, see if you can identify the x-intercepts and the axis of symmetry. All right, so here we go with x squared plus 6x minus 7, which is number 4. We have our x-intercepts at negative 7, 0 and 1, 0. So for my x-intercepts, I'll say negative 7, 0 and 1, 0. I'm just going to write this in intercept form so we can kind of look at it. Remember, we when we put it back into those parentheses, we go opposite. So this is really x plus 7 and x minus 1. So that's just giving you, this is the fact, this and this is equivalent. This is the factored form of that. Now our axis of symmetry, well, let's look at our graph and take a look at our vertex here. So our vertex is way down here at negative 3, negative 16. Remember your axis of symmetry is the same value as the x value of your vertex. So x equals negative 3 in this case. All right, let's do a full run on all our characteristics and see how we do. So you can put the equation into Desmos exactly like this and give it a quick sketch. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we have the graph. We want to get a couple things out of this. Let's go ahead and get our x-intercepts at negative 6, 0 and negative 2, 0. So we got negative 2, 0 and negative 6, 0. So we actually know this answer right here because we just plotted these. Okay, now to go back, I'm going to look at the vertex. So I get some points that, so I can make my, uh, my quadratic graph. Negative 4, negative 8. So my vertex is at negative 4, negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4. Look, see how it's halfway between? That's our axis of symmetry, but we do have to go down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. There's my vertex. I could pull off a couple more points if I wanted to. Three points is usually enough. Make sure you kind of, you round the bottom. And see, sometimes it's not perfect, but that's okay. We want to get a good idea of what it does look like. Now we can go ahead and answer the rest of our questions now that we've done our sketch. Your axis of symmetry is halfway through. It goes right through the vertex. And the name of that line will be x equals negative 4 because it's going to be the same as the x value of your vertex. This is a non-real world problem. Never ends going left or right, which makes its domain all real numbers. For our range, it always, how does the graph compare to the vertex? The graph is above the vertex, so you know it's going to be a greater than or equal to. And so what is that y value there? That y value there is negative 8. So all, the gra all of the graph is greater than negative 8. Then our y-intercept, we can't see it on here. Just because you can't see it does not mean it doesn't exist. Your y-intercept is where x is 0. So let's go look at our table of values. We go to the settings wheel, go to table, where x is 0, my y-value there is 24. So that makes my y-intercept 0, 24. All right, go ahead and try this last problem. Put the equations into Desmos, give it a quick sketch, answer the questions, see how you do. All right, for our last problem, you did have to go a little bit off to get your vertex on there, but it was just one off. That, that's happened. So your vertex was at negative 1, positive 9, which makes your axis of symmetry at negative 1. It's the vertical line here at negative 1. Non-real world problems, our graph is never ending left to right, so our domain is all real numbers. Your range, the entire graph is below the vertex, so it's a less than, and your vertex y value is 9, so the entire graph is less than or equal to 9. Your x-intercepts, there's two of them, occurred at negative 4, 0, and 2, 0, and our y-intercept happened here at 0, 8. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you in class.